Apple demoed this iMac at the spring loaded event and I was really excited for a couple of reasons. One, the new design and the size of it and the fact that it has the M1 chip inside and two, I'm thinking to myself, is it time to replace my Intel MacBook Pro? I don't need the portability, so maybe this is the machine for it. So in this video, I'm going to put my MacBook Pro up against the M1. First, we'll unbox the iMac, and then we'll take a look at some of the new features it has. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I do release new videos every week. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. Your support is always appreciated. So this Mac comes in seven different colors, and I went with the classic gray. So let's start with the options. So we have three different model options, which we can customize. So we have the entry level eight core CPU with the seven core GPU. This comes with 256 gig of storage, eight gig of RAM, and two Thunderbolt USB four ports. This comes in at 1299 in the US and 1249 here in the UK. For the next model, we have the eight core CPU and the eight core GPU. So this comes with an extra core. This has an extra two USB three ports on it, gigabit ethernet. It comes with the magic keyboard that actually has built in touch ID. This model itself, which is the one here, comes in at 1499 in the US and 1499 in the UK. And the top model, which has exactly the same as before, but it comes with 512 gig of storage. This is 1699 in the US and 1649 in the UK. There are some additional extras that you can add on such as more memory and more hard drive. And at this point, this is the one thing I don't really like about the new Macs, which I'm just gonna say it, is they're not as configurable as they used to be. So previously you would be able to install a new hard drive or upgrade your RAM, but at the start of your purchase is the only time you can do this. So think long and hard before you make that decision. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. We're gonna have a quick look inside the box, but one thing it's very unlike Apple, I guess, is these side little bits here. Um, they seem to just be open, which doesn't really seem like Apple's design as such, but they're normally very precise and with their packaging. So not quite sure what happened there, but maybe it's just an, an odd box. Let me know if anybody else has had this in there with their iMac as well. But there's basically a tag at the front. The unit itself, they're showing a couple of arrows here. So it looks like you almost need to pull these to the side. There we go. This is definitely a lot more like Apple in terms of their packaging. So it's very cleverly designed, I have to say, uh, whoever's done this. But yeah, you just push these apart and then there you go. That is your Mac itself. So we can take this out and you can see just inside here where you have the inside of the bottom of the base. So we can take this out itself. Once you take the Mac out, you can see your cabling is just in here. So I think it's just a case of pulling this up. As always, there we go, the standard design by Apple in California. Um, let's have a quick look at what comes inside. So you've got your keyboard. So we just pull that out. You've got your keyboard with your touch ID at the top. And then you have your magic mouse, which is just here. You then have a USB Thunderbolt to lightning cable. Here is the power adapter. So this looks like it goes straight into the unit from here and your power cables themselves. So these are all the power cables. So pop these to a side as well. Inside here, we've got just your standard iMac, how to set it up, shows you what to do there, safety of handling and guarantees. And just like it always has been over the years, you have yourself a nice Apple sticker that comes inside the box. Let's pop this box to one side. Now we have the shiny new iMac unboxed. Let's look at what we're going to compare. So we're gonna start by running Cinebench and Geekbench, compare some overall scores and see what performs better. We'll then be using the Blackmagic disk speed test and see what reads and writes quicker. I have Final Cut installed on both of these iMacs and we will see what exports of 4K video the quickest. And also we'll have a quick look at the new webcam and microphone as well because the iMac does boast about those. We know the specs of the iMac already. It's an M1 chip with eight gig of RAM. However, this MacBook Pro is a little bit more powerful. It has 32 gig of RAM. It has an Intel i9 eight core processor and a four gig AMD graphics card. So let's really see how this stands up. Now I know straight away, some of you will be thinking, 
While this is unfair, the MacBook Pro has 32 gig RAM, but for this test, I'm more interested in the CPU and graphics power. So let's start looking at some of the Geekbench scores. For the single core tests, the MacBook Pro came in at 1055 and the iMac came in at 1724. For the multi-core test, the CPU for the MacBook Pro came in at 7,129 and the iMac came in at 7,660. So from the Geekbench results, the iMac CPU is slightly more powerful. However, the Cinebench scores came in a little bit more varied. The single core results came in the same, so the iMac being more powerful. However, the multi-core CPU MacBook Pro took this one with 7,889 against the IMAX 7,295. Now for the compute side, the Geekbench test is a no-brainer really. The MacBook Pro has four times the amount of memory, so therefore the iMac came in at 19,546 and the MacBook Pro 31,870. Next, we take a look at the Blackmagic read-write test, so the disk speed test. For the MacBook Pro, the write speed came in at 2,692.8 megabytes and the read speed of 2,730.2 megabytes. And for the iMac, the write speed is 2,410.3 megabytes and the read speed of 2,809. Now this one is slightly a little bit more surprising to me. I thought the new drives would be a little bit quicker, but nonetheless, don't get me wrong, these speeds are still very quick. So now we found out a bit of this information, let's put these speeds to the test. Let's do a quick one minute 4K video export on each machine and see how long they take. So the iMac took approximately 25 seconds and the MacBook Pro took approximately 29 seconds. So not so much of a difference between the two. However, you can imagine if it's a slightly longer movie with multiple layers, more soundtracks, etc., etc., it could take a little bit longer. So the final things I want to have a quick look at is the sound and the camera on the actual machine itself. So have a quick look at these clips and see what you think. So this is a straightforward video recording from my MacBook Pro, so we're just doing this to test the sound and the image quality. So there you go. Now I know this was a bit of a tough, tough test to stand up against a powerful MacBook Pro, however looking back at some of the results, I think the iMac did pretty well. For me right now, if I was to buy one of these, I would likely upgrade it to 16 gig of RAM and then I would think it would be a suitable replacement. However, with the WWDC just around the corner, let's see what Apple have in store to say about some of the rumors around the M1X or the M2, whatever you want to call it, and or even the new MacBook Pro. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below and if you've enjoyed it, hit that like and subscribe button. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.